Hello friends, how are you? I'm Arik Ferger and today I'm going to talk about Frau Hohl. Frau Hohl is the mysterious, powerful goddess of the Germanic people. She is linked to many goddesses such as Herk, Hertha, Freya, Frigg, wife of Woden, Holda, Hol, Hulda, Hel, and so on and so forth. She is Hulda, mystery itself, secrecy, the hidden one. Frau Hol appears in many different forms in Scandinavian mythology and legend. She is associated with both the evergreen plants of the Yule season and with snowfall, which is said to be Frau Hol shaking out her feathery mattresses. In some traditions, she is known as the feminine spiritual entity of the forest and plants that grow in the soils of the woodland realms. Frau Hol is the embodiment of the earth, the very soils beneath our feet, in which she is the queen. She is linked to death, to those who go into the other world, the realm of the dead, and thus both she and the dead propitiate fertility. Frau Hol is a goddess of rebirth. But what else do we know about this goddess? Since the 10th century, the Frankish Christians made a fervent propaganda against the diabolical beliefs of certain evil women, as they described in medieval texts. And such women were said to ride at night with their goddess Diana, which was perceived to be the goddess of the pagans during the early Middle Ages, or even ride with Herodias, the most famous witch of the time along with other ghostly creatures and beasts. However, in Northern Europe, it was believed that such women, witches, would ride across the sky alongside with their goddess equivalent to Diana and Herodias. She was Hol or Holda, probably still known in some parts in that period by the name of Huda, which we shall explore in a few moments right now. <laughs> Hulda would guide the furious horde of spirits during the winter months between the time perceived as Samhain and Yule, to the Germanic peoples simply between the months of darkness, from the longest night until Yule, when light starts to slowly come back into the world. Just like the Welsh goddess Ceredwen, Frau Hol is the ancient, the primordial Earth Mother figure of the Underworld, the Lady of Death, Initiation and Rebirth. Frau Hol may indeed have been known originally as Hulda, a goddess even before the Norse pantheon, or even the Germanic pantheon as a whole, had a perceptible structure. It's curious because in Scandinavian folklore, a huldar or huldra is a feminine creature or, or spirit of the forest, with the same etymological root of hulda, meaning covered or secret, hidden. And many place names in Scandinavia are derived from huldar, uh, which are places in folklore we find them associated with legends of the heathen folk. Norwegian settlers in Iceland took with them a variety of their old traditions and pagan beliefs, and the belief in heathen people remained in Icelandic folklore, the Hudelfolk. The Hudelfolk derive from the Scandinavian Ófar, elves, which are perceived as being spiritual entities residing inside the earth, associated with the burial mound, the houses of the dead which I shall explore the subject on a future video, don't worry. The Icelandic Udelfolk is the construction of Norse Ulfar and the hill fairies or good people the Irish slaves believed in, gradually blended to give rise to the Udelfolk. We are dealing in here with three different sets of belief that are the exact same from a more distant prehistoric past and the belief in spiritual entities that inhabit hills and or burial mounds, hiding in the underground. All these terms refer to something that is hidden 
It is in secrecy, and Frau Hol, or Hulda, is indeed quite similar in functions to the Norse goddess Hel, goddess of the underworld. Hel derives from the Gothic word Helia and Hold High German Hella, a word commonly translated as underworld, but the essence of the word transmits the idea of concealment. Underworld in this case is not a realm, the underworld as we perceive to be an afterlife place, but a hidden place within the earth, in darkness and secrecy. So, indeed, all of these terms suggest a connection with the earth, with the underground. And this may help us to understand the connection between rebirth, fertility and death in the figure of Frau Hol. As the dead were perceived to propitiate fertility to the soils, because that was their realm, the underworld, the earth beneath our feet, quite literally. And the heathen folk, be that the hill fairies of the Irish, the Ofar of the Scandinavians, the hooded folk of Icelanders, were believed to be the spirits of the dead, the ancestral spirits that became such creatures after death, propitiating the fertility of the soils. It was believed that the dead in the burial mound would not really die, but suffer a transformation, and they would reborn in the earth, within the burial mound, and become these spiritual entities, the hidden people. And Frau Hol is the epitome of all these beliefs, the very personification of these spiritual entities and the cult of the dead linked to fertility. She is the queen of the underworld. She is the queen of the hidden folk. She is Hulda, secrecy, that which lies in secrecy, concealed in the dark, hollowed places of the earth. Don't worry, I shall explore this subject of the cult of the dead, burial mounds and related to fertility on a future video. This aspect of death that propitiates the fertility of the soils and rebirth makes Frau Hol a goddess of both life and death. Perhaps this might be one of the reasons why the goddess Hell later on was perceived as being half rotten and half flesh. I believe this aspect of being rotten in one side and flesh on the other is a Christian conception of the goddess Hell herself, turning her into a monster to better equate her with the plague perceived as being a great evil brought upon the world due to witches and their cults of earth mother goddesses. But Hell being half flesh and half rotten seems to be indeed a demonization of her figure to dissuade the pagans from keeping on praising such an entity. But indeed Hell, for the pagans, might have been perceived indeed as having two sides, but I doubt it was rotten and flesh. Hell seems to have been perceived as white and black. The, the color black to the pagans, to the pagan Europeans, was not the color of death, but the color of the earth, the European soils. Black was the color used to represent fertility, while white was the color of death, the color of the corpse, but in here also linked to rebirth, therefore the white of light. And hell having two sides possibly comes from Frau Hol, or rather Hulda. And the Christian conceptions of half-rotten and half flesh goddess might indeed have come from Hulda first, as she was perceived by the 10th century Christians to be the goddess of the northern witches. That image got stuck in the figure of hell when Snorri Sturluson continued to feed that medieval Christian uh, conception during the 13th century, while Hulda progressively lost that aspect of having two sides by being integrated into the Christian religious panorama within the Christianized pagan celebrations of fertility of continental Germans, and finally became associated with the Heavenly Mother or Mother Mary. So Frau Hol and Hell are simultaneously goddesses of the earth 
of life and death, the duplicity of their aspects of light and darkness, the combination of day and night, creation and dissolution, brightness and shadows, which is reflected in the darkest months of the year in which it is said she reigns and guides the ancestral spirits in the furious horde across the skies. From the darkest night until the day, light starts to come back into the world. Does this remind you of something or someone? Indeed, Odin as the leader of the wild hunt. Before Odin uh, took, the, to, to, took that role in Germanic paganism, in a more archaic past it was Frau Hol, or rather the goddess known as Hulda, to the continental Germans and hell to the Scandinavians. Frau Hol linked to the wild hunt is actually still perceptible in her aspect as Hulda. The wild hunt in many parts of Germany is still referred to as Eljagd, either dead or death hunt or infernal hunt, infernal in opposition to supernal, infernal as in inferior, down there, the underworld. Heliag, Hell Hunt, the Hidden Hunt, the Underworld Hunt. In some parts of Germany, she wasn't forgotten as the original leader of the Twilight Cavalcade. Hulda comes from the Indo European Kolyo, which was said to be a goddess of death. Kolyo means the protector, the one that covers, covers up, hides. Always the same idea of concealment as previously spoken. In fact, this Indo-European goddess is said to have had a physical form which was meant as the impersonation of the very emotions towards death, both fascination and horror. Kolyo was said to be very beautiful and seductive even when seen from the front, while her back was repulsive. Not only this reminds us of Hell, but also the Scandinavian Huldra. Huldra is a stunningly beautiful woman with long hair, and her hair hides the hollow back. The back can either be perceived as made of bark, quite rugged, or hollowed, like an old tree trunk. So always this idea of concealment, with a hole in the back resembling perhaps the hollowed places of the earth caves that lead to the underground, and caves in prehistoric times were perceived to be the first human sanctuaries, and perhaps this idea of underworld, a place for the dead, indeed comes from the deposition of bodies in caves. Concealment of the body in a cave, a dark place, a concealed place, hidden place in darkness, which leads down into the earth, the realm of the dead the underworld. To the Norse, Hulda Hol, is described as Lodin, the mother of the god Thur. She is also known as Jord, the earth itself. Which is interesting, as we have previously seen, Frau Hol is indeed connected to the earth, death, fertility and rebirth of the soils. And Frau Hol in folklore is sometimes associated with winter snowfall. It is said that when Frau Hol shakes out her mattresses, white feathers fall to the earth. Since her season is within the darkest months of winter, she is obviously associated with snowfalls during this season, burning the ground, bringing death. But I'm particularly interested in this idea that when she shakes her mattresses, white feathers fall. It might not be just a reference to snow itself. With the first snows, white feathers fall, the feathers of geese. Geese remain quite important in Scandinavian folklore, and winter is their migration period. They leave Scandinavia and go south. Frau Hol's sacred bird is the goose, which is also an animal associated with the wild hunt, or the dead hunt. In folklore, indeed, it is often said that when geese take flight during winter, the crystalline snowflakes fall from their wings. 
the nocturnal croak of migration geese are equated with the same ghostly howls of wolves or barking of dogs or the neighing of horses in the wild hunt. The shamanic communities of the Arctic regions, in their perception of riding into the underworld, the totemic animal they use to ride is not the horse, but the goose. Arctic regions retain much of their original shamanic worldviews, in which the horse has little meaning to them. In fact, as I've said in the video about the cloak of Odin, the Sami, for instance, in their early prehistoric culture did not have a general use of the horse. It wasn't a strong religious motif to them. The elk was, and geese, but not the horse. The Sami borrowed religious motifs from their Norse Germanic neighbors in relation to the horse as a religious symbol. In fact, to the Sami, the horse became a feared and the tested animal, not only because the animal was the preferred form of transportation and an important religious symbol of their Norse neighbors, but also it was the animal of the violent cult of Odin. The Sami equated Odin to their god of sickness and death called Ruto. In fact, by the time the Sami adopted certain religious aspects of the Norse, including the cult of Odin, their own god Ruto started to gain Odin's attributes and started to ride a horse. Do watch that video if you have the time, where I speak about this in more detail. The point here is that the horse was indeed a tremendously important religious motif to the Europeans who adopted, or rather was forced upon them, the religious conceptions of Indo-Europeans, who greatly praised the horse. In fact, the horse was the most important animal for Indo-Europeans. But further north, in the Arctic regions, Indo-European religious concepts hardly reached. And such religious conceptions started to reach the north, quite late in human history, during the Iron Age. So, in the Arctic, sham shamanic worldviews of pre-Indo-Europeans were better preserved and the horse has little meaning to the people of the Arctic. So, the goose was, and still is, the animal totem the Arctic shamans rode, and still ride, to reach the underworld, the world of the spirits and Frau Hol is still linked to geese, to the figure of the goose. And as we have seen already, she is the queen of the underworld. She is Hel, the earth mother keeper of the dead, the one that covers, the one that envelops and protects the dead. Always this motherly figure protecting her children in her earthly womb, even after death. So the origins of Frau Hol are far more prehistoric, more archaic, most likely indeed pre-Indo-European. The Earth Mother of the Underworld, Keeper of the Dead, probably a Paleolithic goddess. By the end of this video I leave you two videos I have made for the goddess Hell, and the ideas expressed in that video might give you some clues about the ancient origins of the goddess Hell, and, subsequently, Frau Hall. So, we seem to have an underworld earth motherly figure, goddess, Hel and Hulda, the primordial cave mother, protector and keeper of the dead, which with Indo-Europeans, or Indo-European religious conceptions, the primordial goddess was fused with their death goddess, Kolyo, giving origins to the versions of the Scandinavian folk creature Hulder, the duality in the physical aspects of Hel and Frau Hol. We know that this very ancient goddess Hulda, most likely pre-Indo-European, held dominion over death, the cold darkness of winter, caves, graves and tombs in the earth. Hulda, the original Frau Hol, without a doubt was worshipped during the Stone Age, 
we can't be certain for how long her worship lasted, but to be associated with earthly tombs and probably with the burial mounds, maybe she was still worshipped during the Neolithic, which would make sense as Huda was a goddess also known to receive the fertile seed, the light of midwinter. She is the fertilized egg, which transforms the, the tomb, the grave mound, into a womb for the gestation of new life. The burial mound itself resembles the shape of a womb, in which it is perceived that the dead would enter and go through a process of transformation and be reborn. The burial mound is linked to rebirth. But about that on a future video. I'm getting too excited. <laughs> There's so much I want to share with you. In the near future, I'll have for you a video about the burial mound and the cult of the dead, where I shall explore a bit more of this. Anyway, in conclusion, referring to this duality of death and life expressed in Hulda or Frau Hol, she is a goddess tied to the cycle of death and eventual rebirth, as new life springs forth eventually after the dark and cold winter months start to wane away at Yule, which is the end of Frau Hol's season, when the sun starts to come back into the world. As you can see, Frau Hol is a very complex deity with many aspects, which just shows how ancient this goddess really is. She has evolved throughout the centuries, well, throughout a couple of thousands of years, actually, and it is nearly impossible to associate her with just one single aspect of the religious perceptions of the ancient world. All right, my dear friends, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Enjoy the season of Yule. You are still in time for riding with Frau Hall across the skies as soon as darkness falls into the world. Go on, treat yourself, have fun. Thank you so much for watching. See you on the next video. And, tak for it up.